I wonder if I could capture 3i Atlas tonight. Would it be possible? Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, we had a clear night last night and I was imaging the large Magellanic Cloud and then I had this crazy idea that maybe I could have a go at imaging this comet 3i Atlas that everybody's talking about. Now it was coming up very close to sunrise and extremely low in the eastern sky, very close to the horizon. And uh, I thought, well, why not give it a go? You know, if it's too bright, it's too bright. We'll see what we can get. Unfortunately, I can't use the telescopes in the observatory because they can't see very low in the eastern sky. So that's why I grabbed the uh, SCAR SQA-70, threw it on the deck here. And as I was imaging the large Magellanic cloud at about, I think it was about 4 or 4.15 or something like that, I pointed this telescope in the direction of where 3i Atlas should be rising and uh, tried to capture it. Now 3i Atlas is, it was only discovered in July uh, this year and it's the third interstellar object that we have discovered. Uh, that's why it's called 3 and I, so the I is interstellar and 3 being the third. Uh, the other two are Oumaumau and I think Borisov is how you pronounce those. And they know this is an interstellar uh, object coming from another star system because of the hyperbolic trajectory it's taking uh, so it's not trapped within the Sun's uh, gravitational field so it's not in orbit around the Sun it's actually just passing through our solar system and okay it's doing a few unusual things it's it's moving particularly fast but that you know doesn't mean it can't be a comet uh, they think it's quite big. Uh, the measurements vary between 300 metres and 5.5 and kilometres, with I think the most common thought to be 1 kilometre in size. And I, I, I think that also because it was sort of coming into the solar system on the same plane that the um, planets orbit around the Sun, people are starting to think that was very suspicious. Uh, but you know, there's no reason why a comet can't be doing that, and it's passing close to Mars and Jupiter, but again, it can do that. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to make out that it's some um, alien spaceship, but uh, there's no real proof of that. It is all but doing behaviours that could easily be uh, explained by a comet. Anyway, look, I'll show you what I captured this morning and uh, we'll head over to the computer. Okay, well, it's 4.20 in the morning. I'm trying to talk quietly because everybody's asleep. And we're going to have a go at this uh, Comet 3i Atlas. Uh, where it's probably about to pop over the horizon very shortly. I've got a very small window to try and capture this. So I've got the Ascar out on the deck and um, I've got a good view to the east. Uh, it's got a sort of pop up, I think, above uh, Mototapu or Rangitoto. And then uh, we'll see if we can capture it. Fingers crossed, but it's uh, probably another. 20 minutes away before I can attempt it. So we'll just have to wait for a bit. Hmm. You can see it's getting quite light. If we go into the sequence, I'm just going to get it not to refocus. I just wonder if it's that down there. I don't know. I just put the mouse on there and see what happens. All right, so I thought I was on a bit of a hiding to nowhere trying to capture this thing. I wasn't even entirely sure that I'd captured it by the end of the session. And it was very low in the sky and the sun was making things, you know, difficult. So uh, I only did six one minute exposures, each of blue, green and red in that order. By the time I got to red, uh, it was so bright that I only ended up using, I think, the last well, the first three images of the red and I didn't use the last three. So I've only got three minutes of red and I've got six minutes of green and six minutes of blue. Now it turned out that the little fuzzy object that I was seeing next to a star was the comet. And uh, if we look on the screen here and I zoom in, 
you can see this is the comet here next to the star. Now there is a lot of um, artifact around here because I have no calibration frames. I've got no dark frames or flat frames and you can see the dust bunnies here. But uh, I still thought, well, it, it'll be good enough to at least get some sort of image from it. I might do some flats and some darks um, later tonight and see if I can improve on this. But I thought I'll just deal with what I've got. And you can see this is the uh, green filter stack. So there's a green uh, one here. I've, I've done a one times drizzle. And so here's the star and here is the comet. And there is a fair bit of noise around here. But I did do some denoising, some quite heavy denoising on the individual frames, which I've got over here in Blink. But the faint object down here, which has the appearance of a comet, which we can see in the uh, first blue 60 second capture quite clearly, um, it has that sort of fuzzy look of a comet, whereas the stars are quite... Um, you know, defined. And usually if it's an asteroid, it would usually look a bit more like a little star moving through, not this sort of look here. Now, if we uh, run them through using the blink, you'll be able to see the object clearly moving in relation to the stars. You can see towards the end, it's getting pretty bright. And these are the red filter ones, which we're picking up a lot of um, ambient light from the sun coming up. But I'm just gonna stop this here, just go to here. If we just zoom in, if I just go between the first and the last, you can clearly see the movement of the comet here. Now, was I sure that this was the actual comet? Um, the coordinates matched. Now, when I put it into uh, orbitals, uh, it was it sort of placed it up around, I think about here somewhere, but that was at a time before it had uh, come above the horizon, risen above the horizon. So by the time I was imaging it, it probably clearly moved down in this direction. And of course, I've shown you that the movement even over a period of, well, this this is only, uh, what are we, 15 minutes? And it's moved from here to here. So it's moving um, quite a bit. So, I, you know, it fits that this, that would have been the, the object. Also, it showed it was near this very faint object here, which is a galaxy. Again, once I stacked everything and plate solved it, it picked that up as being the galaxy and annotated it. So I am pretty confident that this is 3i Atlas. If I just go to the final stack here, um, and, and you can see we've got the stars here and we've got the nice green of a comet here. Uh, I've tried to darken things up in the background because obviously there is a lot of background light from the from the sun. This uh, coming up looking a bit blue here is actually the galaxy that I was mentioning. And um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure that I could really say that I can see a tail or whatever. There is sort of some light going in this direction, a bit of light going in this direction, which I don't think you can see on YouTube, but I'm not really confident enough to say that I'm seeing either a tail or an anti-tail here. But certainly we've got the nice um, sort of fuzzy green look uh, typical of a comet. So here is an annotated uh, version of the of the image. Uh, there's the comet down there. There's a lot going on in the background here. But this is this galaxy I was mentioning, NGC 4691. And uh, I'm going to just flick now to Nina. So here is the picture that I put into Nina. It's plate solved it. This is the galaxy that was nearby. This is the comet. And the coordinates of the sort of center part of this image, which is roughly where the comet is, matches pretty closely with what I had in orbitals. Uh, it was slightly different in the fact that I think it had the comet being positioned up here somewhere. Uh, but of course, I'd put those coordinates in, in orbitals uh, you know, at least an hour or more before I started imaging, so it would have moved down to this point here by the time I imaged it. And as I showed you in the blinked images, it was moving quite rapidly in this direction just over a period of 15 minutes. So that really confirmed for me that uh, this was de indeed 3i Atlas that I had captured and also um, no other comets in this immediate area, area that I know of anyway. All right, well, that is my capture of Comet 3i Atlas. I was quite pleased I was actually able to get anything, to be honest. And uh, you can clearly see it's got the nice green of the comet. Um, yeah, just quite exciting to be able to capture 
an interstellar object, an object that has come from another star system and it's passing through and will never be seen again, unlike the other comets which are in an orbit around the sun. Yes, they may never be seen again by us individually because they have such long uh, periods going around, you know, 1500 years plus or whatever. But uh, this thing is never coming back. So nice to at least get, it, get an image of it as it's passing through. So look, it is going to be coming up over the horizon earlier and earlier each day, which means you will get a bit more of a breather before sunrise. I know that I think it came up at 4.15 this morning, but on Friday it is predicted to come up at 4 a.m. So that's a 15 minute extra window and the sun is only coming up three minutes earlier. So that's good. And there's a possibility to... Uh, you know, get through all the filters. Now, unfortunately, we have a lot of rain and clouds forecast for the next seven to 10 days. So I'm going to just keep an eye out and see whether, you know, there is a little window of opportunity. I only need about, you know, half an hour or so to capture this comet again. And so I'll be keeping an eye on the forecast and maybe getting up early in the morning to see if it's worth whipping the telescope outside for another imaging session. But certainly have a look uh, where it's going to be locally for you and give it a go before it disappears. It is possible to capture it from your backyard and with uh, all sorts of telescope, even a wide field telescope, relatively wide field telescope like the ASK-70. So um, yeah, give it a go before it disappears forever. And uh, for that reason, I'm wishing everybody lots and lots of clear skies. Oh yes, Kodos. Earth is now ripe for the plucking. <laughs>